So what do you do when you're prepping for a hurricane? You make a video. apologize for not putting out a video last week. A lot's happened since I last shot that video. Um, I lost one of my green bottle blues. It was right after I had shot that video on feeding slings and um, it was kind of odd when I was feeding the, that particular sling. It refused food so I thought it was in pre-molt. It even acted defensively when I tried to give it food so I didn't really think much of it. Then um, a couple days later I checked in on it to see if it was indeed in pre-molt or if it was molting and I found it in a death crawl. So I was pretty upset about it, um, not only because I lost the green bottle blue, um, but because it was the first sling that I had actually lost. Now I know these things happen, but you know when I did my research and I looked in on it, I made a huge noob mistake and I'll admit I'm still kind of a beginner. I'd say I'm more intermediate and I, I do my homework on my species and things like that. But um, yeah, it was it was a new mistake. I left it in the deli cup that I bought it in and it was pretty moist in there and it didn't have a ton of ventilation. So um, when I did my research to go back and check, you know, I assumed that it was going to be okay for a little while in the deli cup until I could get it a better enclosure. And uh, that was a big mistake on my part. I, I found out that they required a whole lot more ventilation than what was in there and they don't need that much of a moist substrate. So it was a very expensive lesson learned for me. Um, it was that that particular sling was about $50. So that's fifty dollars gone but more importantly I lost one of my favorite species I still have one left I'm hoping it's a female but you know how that goes so another thing that happened last weekend was that um, I purchased a new computer and I live in a small town so our major purchases we usually do in the next town over because it's a lot bigger and has a whole lot more, more stores and um, so it's about an, almost an hour drive so we usually make a day out of it and um, so I went to go pick up my computer and when we got home it was a little bit late so I went to set up the computer and I find out that it's DOA the thing would not boot it just kept cycling over and over so that was it for that computer and I had to take it back it was already too late to take it back that day so I had to take it back the next day um, I went back and I purchased a new computer and I no longer trusted that computer because of the issues I had with it so I decided to upgrade to a little bit better computer which is you know a benefit for me um, however when I brought it home and I set it up um, I found out that I couldn't transfer my old um, video editing software over at least not quite yet so I decided to make the jump to um, Adobe Premiere and I, I love Adobe Premiere it's you know top of the line as far as video editing software goes but there's a little bit of a learning curve with it and I'd never really used Adobe Premiere I've just kind of messed with it so I had to learn it and it really didn't give me a whole lot of time to put a video together so that's pro pro you know part of the reason why I missed last week um, another thing that has happened is that we're in the process of having a hurricane. I live in Florida and Hurricane Irma is looming in on us and uh, by tomorrow, probably at night, um, it should be hitting us. So that was another major thing that happened in our lives and we've been prepping all this time for hurricane, buying supplies, boarding up windows, taking care of things around the house that need to be taken care of in, in preparation for it. So again, that put a damper on it. Well, today everything's all boarded up, everything's taken care of. We got all our supplies and we're all ready. So I got a little bit of spare time now and uh, I'm shooting a video today. So the purpose of my video today is kind of a twofold thing going on here. Um, first of all, my Lasciadora parhimanas, which I've shown you before, they've gotten kind of big for their enclosure, so I need to do an enclosure change today. And uh, 
they're about three and a half inches and I ended up picking up a tub like this for relatively cheap so you know I kind of like that it gives them more room to move around in and I decided I wanted to go ahead and put them into that larger enclosure but one of the things that I like to do when I'm not on shooting a video usually is um, I like to keep my camera handy with me so that whenever I do an enclosure change I kind of take it as an opportunity to take pictures of my tarantulas um, and uh, I'll sometimes set up something for them so that I can take some decent pictures and post them on the website or just post them on Facebook or Instagram or something to that effect. So I wanted to pass on some um, photography tips to you and the reason for that is because like I've said before I'm a teacher I'm not no gozillionaire so I do a lot of DIY stuff and uh, I also try to find ways that I can do things a little bit more inexpensively so that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today and give you some photography tips on how to take better pictures of your tarantulas so let me go ahead and do the um, enclosure change right now and I'll do one and then I'll take do with the other one but take pictures of it and demo that for you so Lassiodora parhibana um, are very large tarantulas they get pretty large um, I think they top out about eight inches although some people will tell you that they get bit as big as uh, Goliath bird eaters uh, Terraposa blondi or um, Terraposa sturmi and uh, they actually don't I don't think I've ever seen one that got that big I know other people have said that they have never seen one get um, as large as those but eight inches is still quite a bit it's quite large for a tarantula and it's a pretty impressive size now they're known for being a fairly bold tarantula um, I know that when they get larger people say that they tend to chill out and they are not as defensive but um, in my opinion or at least in my experience these little guys have been extremely defensive they flick hairs all the time and I've even had them do threat postures here and there but um, you know I don't know how they're gonna react when I transfer them over but I do know that they do tend to get a little bit defensive for their size so let me go ahead and do this one and transfer it over okay so um, usually and I'll bring this over here usually when I go to do usually when I do any maintenance on their enclosures um, they tend to be very defensive toward me I get a whole lot of hair flicking so let me go ahead there you go there's a threat posture there and it probably thinks it's getting fed but yeah it's not being very friendly so I'm gonna try to coax it over and this guy would like to stand and fight there he goes he's moving along so I can just coax him on over um, do I dare let's see if I can get him no I'm not gonna bother he's pretty defensive right now he doesn't want to go over there he senses something's up and he doesn't want to make that jump over the wall there there we go all right not too bad I didn't get any hair flicking there he just went straight on over so that was good I probably could have held it but as usual I'm a chicken nugget so let's talk about photography now when it comes to taking pictures of your tarantulas your larger tarantulas it's pretty easy you just take any camera that you have and you can snap beautiful pictures of them and they usually turn out pretty good because they're large enough that it doesn't really matter what kind of lenses that you're using as long as you can take a decent picture of your tarantula but when it comes to slings that's when I started to encounter a problem I wanted to get better pictures of my slings now I happen to belong to a um, photographer's photo uh, group in Facebook and a lot of people share ideas and post their pictures and so on and it was a nature photography group and I usually see pictures of birds and reptiles and things out in the open but they're usually distant shots and so on and uh, there happened to be one guy on there who was always taking macro shots of 
things of small insects and arachnids and things that were around his backyard. And I was fascinated by them because they were super clear and very well focused and you can see every detail on these things. And a lot of people were intrigued by it and they would ask him what his setup was. And he was pretty free with giving away information. And I found out that he wasn't shooting with a DSLR. He was actually shooting with a bridge camera. And uh, a bridge camera, of course, is a fixed lens camera that is similar to a DSLR. It looks kind of like it, but it has more features of a point and shoot type camera. And I shoot with a uh, Canon 7D, and it's not the Mark II, this is the older Canon 7D. And um, you know, this is not a top of the line camera, this is not your professional cameras. It's still a crop sensor, it doesn't have the full sensor. Um, it's not a, a entry level DSLR, but it's more of an intermediate DSLR, what they call a semi-pro DSLR. It takes excellent pictures, however, um, you know, you can put different lenses on it and so on. So when I was looking at um, at what he was doing, I thought that he used macro lenses or a macro lens. So I was looking at investing in a macro lens. Now, they're relatively expensive, you know, for lenses, they're about $600, $800 or so for a dedicated macro lens. And um, I was very surprised at what he used because like I said, he was using a bridge camera and he wasn't using a macro lens. What he was using was a snap-on um, macro lens like this. This is called the Raynox DCR250 and it is a snap-on macro lens. Now, the only drawback to this is that it only fits on, um, let's see, 52 millimeter to 67 millimeter um, lenses. So if you have a huge lens, it's not going to fit on there. But let's face it, if you're buying huge lenses like that, you probably have the money to buy yourself a dedicated macro lens. But the cool thing about this little attachment is that it turns just about any lens that's within those parameters into a macro lens. So not only do you have one single macro lens, you can turn just about any lens that you have that fits that into a macro lens. Now, what I typically use is a 50 millimeter 1.4. This is the Canon 50 millimeter 1.4. And uh, it's not the plastic fantastic, the 1.8, and it's not the super expensive 1.2. So it's a middle of the road lens, which is a decent lens. And I use it mostly for portrait photography. That's what's usually good for. But um, I could use it to turn it into a macro lens. And this is what I use most of the time. Um, this is kind of my go-to lens for macro photography, and it does a good job. And all you do is just snap it onto the front, very similar to how you put on your lens cap. You squeeze the two little um, things on the side here and you put it on your lens and it snaps right on and that's it you've got yourself a macro lens now one of the important things that you have to understand when shooting macro is that um, depth of field becomes an issue your depth of field changes so this lens goes down to 1.4 which is your, your f-stop so that means it's wide open so if you go wide open when you're shooting with this lens your depth of field is going to go to pot it's going to be terrible and you're going to have a very very small area of focus so what you want to do is you want to end up going to a higher f-stop um, I usually shoot at f14 sometimes I even shoot as high as f22 which is just a pinpoint so therein lies a problem right if you're shooting at, at high f-stops like that or if, if you're shooting at, a, at an f-stop like f14 or f22 you're going to not have enough light you're going to run into a light issue where when you snap the picture it's going to be real real dark so what you want to do is you want to use a flash now this is another thing that really surprised me about what this guy did he did not have a dedicated flash. He did not have a remote flash or anything like that. Um, he just used his pop-up flash. So um, he just, you know, of course, there's your pop-up flash like that. But he did something that was really cool. Um, and that is a flash diffuser. Um, you need a flash diffuser like this. And this is a homemade flash diffuser that I made with um, cardstock, uh, what I call tag, what we have called tag board and uh, tin foil, um, a little bit of wax paper and uh, a lot of duct tape all right and it, it, it does the trick it's really cool he showed one that he made with styrofoam cups 
So there's really a whole lot of different things that you can use to make yourself a flash diffuser. And this is what does the trick. So the way that this is angled out like that, of course it's gonna cast light downward onto your subject and it's gonna make it brighten up and you're gonna be able to take nice clear shots with f-stops at f11, f14, f22. Um, so, you know, that's gonna make all the difference in the world. So I'm gonna demonstrate this. Um, this particular one right here, this one, uh, is mine. This is my wife's actually. I made this for her and of course this one's camo and this one's mine But if, as you can see I crushed it. So I've got to make a new one for myself I'm not gonna do it in this video But I'm gonna show you how I make these and I'll probably I'll, I'll even post a, a, like a PDF file or something with um, Pattern so that you can make this yourself um, it's it's pretty easy to make and I just use a rubber band to kind of put it on there and just to give you an example of that is um, It's kind of open right there. So I just slide that over the flash Over the pop-up flash just like that and then I take my rubber band and I hook it to the viewfinder And then I just hook it to this little tab that I made right there and there it stays so this is my flash diffuser that I use for taking macro pictures. And of course, I've got my Raynox DCR250 hooked onto my 50 millimeter lens. So um, not only that, but just like this, I've got an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. And this lens right here is your standard um, kit lens that comes with some of your entry level um, DSLRs came with my entry level DSLR. And as you can see, it just snaps on just like that. Um, this is another lens, which is not exactly a great lens, but it is a um, 55 to 250 millimeter lens. And again, this is a, 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 a telephoto lens, which has a quite a bit of zoom on it. And this will make a, an incredible macro lens that can get really, really close to your subject. And again, it just snaps on like that and you're good to go and you've got another macro lens. So I'm going to demo all these lenses and show you what the pictures look like and you can judge for yourself. If you're on a budget, this is the way to go. Now the Raynox DCR250 retails for $59.86 on Amazon and I'll post a link for that. They do make a lower end uh, lens which doesn't zoom in as much and that is the DCR150 and that one retails for $49.95. So uh, again I'll post a link for both of these but I use the 250 and you'll see um, my pictures from that. Okay so I've kind of changed positions here to give you a better view of what I do. Um, what I have set up here is just some foam board um, and it's just black foam board that I purchased at Walmart and I just use it as a backdrop so that um, when I take the pictures it's not just on the surface of the table and it kind of helps make their color stand out and things like that. Um, I do have a more natural setting that I also use but um, I'm not going to use that with this one. I tend to use that one more for my larger tarantulas. So let me get him out of here. And one thing that you should have is a catch cup. And in this case, I use this little deli cup or deli tray thing. And um, that's so that your tarantula doesn't bolt and you can kind of control where it's going. Now he doesn't like not being able to hold on to anything. And he just crawled right back in. Alright, so he's going to be a little bit feisty there. Oh, he's flicking hairs. Don't like that. Alright, let's see if I can get him to go on the deli tray. Does not want to go. Come on, buddy. There we go, there we go. Turn right back around. Alright, that's probably the hardest part is getting him out. Oof. And he's flicking more hairs. You see what I mean about these little salmon pinks? They do not want to cooperate and they flick hairs all over the place. Hey Teddy, what you doing in here, buddy? That's my dog. Alright, so we got it out. Come on, stay, stay, stay.
All right, so we finally got it out. And I'm going to kind of move it out of the way a little bit. I don't like it being over here. It just left a whole pile of hair that it flicked. All right, so I have it sitting in one spot. And now I can go ahead and take picture. So what I'm using here is my 50 millimeter 1.4 and my settings I am at, I like to crank up my, my um, shutter speed as high as it'll go and it'll let me only go up to 1 250th and I'm putting it on f14 and I'm setting my ISO at 100. You want to set your ISO at 100 because 100 is going to give you the clearest picture. So again, this is something that's working against you as far as light is concerned because 100 is a slower ISO, but it's going to give you the best shot. So let me go ahead and get in here. And uh, because this is a larger tarantula, that even if it's three and a half inches, I'm not going to get the whole body in there. And your autofocus still works. So there's a shot and um, I'm in pretty close. I'm going to go to, let's see, I'm going to increase it up to um, F20, F18. Let's go to F18 because my, my um, depth of field was really bad on that one. So this is going to give me a better depth of field. All right, and you kind of want to focus on the eyes on the carapace. Sometimes it gives you a little bit of trouble. Macro photography focusing is probably one of the biggest issues you're going to have. Um, sometimes it wants to focus and sometimes you have to move back and forth. All right, so he's giving me a different position so that gives me a better shot. So I'm going to get down here, try to focus in. And again, focus, you just got to kind of play with it until you get it right. Oh, that's a nice one. All right, so I'm going to switch lenses now to demonstrate the uh, 55, 18 to 55. I'll snap off the Raynox, put it on the new one. you need to be still buddy okay so this is going to give me an, a zoom option so I can actually zoom out with this one and when I zoom out the cool thing is I can get the tarantula's entire body in here so now let me try that come on there we go oh much better so I got the whole body in there now And you can experiment with different angles. If you want to take a shot from above. All right, and uh, I'm going to take a, I'm going to zoom in pretty good. And this one's going to go a little bit tighter than the um, than the 50 millimeter. And one thing you don't want to do with this one or this 18 to 55 is you don't want to zoom out completely and I'll demonstrate that because you're going to get a weird shot and you'll see what I mean when you see it. Okay, so now I'm going to switch over to the um, 55 to 50, which is a zoom lens and you can get in pretty tight with this the only problem with this is you may have to go into autofocus or manual focus I mean oh he's starting to move around okay all right so you can zoom out but it's still relatively tight oh, he's wanting to move around quite a bit now all right, buddy, be still. There we go. 
Okay. So at 55, it's still going to be tight because it's like a 55 millimeter lens, right? And your, like I said, your autofocus doesn't work as well because it's a. It's a zoom lens. Now you can get in real tight with this one, but like I said, the autofocus really doesn't work very well. So if that is the case, then you might want to switch to manual focus and try to see if that works for you. There we go. And it's going to give you a close shot. But you're going to really have to work for that. And I'm bumping this up to f22. And I'm going to zoom in even more. Alright. Okay, and that's a really, really tight shot. put this over him. Whoop. There we go. Didn't know these little guys could move so fast. And that's one of the reasons why you want to be calm when you're dealing with all of your spiders because they can bolt and when they bolt they can climb over just about anything and if you stay calm you can catch them just like that control them and then you can move them where you need to after they've done that. Alright, so I'm going to switch back over and finish this up. So that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, once again, this is the Raynox DCR250. I'll post a link in, in link below so that you can purchase yours from Amazon if you'd like one. And uh, if you want to check out my next video, the topic is going to be about making these flash diffusers. I'll even post a PDF of the uh, pattern for the flash diffuser and I'll show you exactly how to make how I make these. Um, they're great, especially if you're going to be using macro or doing macro photography. And uh, also, if you pray, please pray for Florida. We are just now getting hit by Hurricane Irma in, in the Keys, and uh, it's going to do some significant dam damage. So let's pray we all make it out of here okay. Um, if you like my videos, please hit the like button below. If you want to see more, subscribe. And until next time, keep loving those tarantulas.